that the Queen Mary would sail from Southampton, only the most optimistic believed. When these pictures were taken, the liner was almost deserted. Her great empty spaces, a sight few passengers had ever seen before. British railway steamers serving the Channel Islands were also delayed. But it was the Queen Mary and other big ships elsewhere that took the headlines. The unofficial strike of seamen, communist inspired according to leaders of the National Union of Seamen, struck at transatlantic passengers and British holidaymakers. By special train, many would-be Queen Mary passengers returned to London, hoping to cross the ocean by air. London. To a meeting in Canning Town, seamen went to hear the unofficial strike leader, 41-year-old Pat Neary. Neary urged the men to stay out. As he put it, continue the fight. Now the Queen Elizabeth came into Southampton. No one yet knowing whether her crew would respond to the captain's appeal to continue work or do as they would be urged by the strikers and refuse to return to New York. Incidentally, the wage rates recently agreed will cost the Cunard Company three quarters of a million a year. Meanwhile, the crew of more than 1,200 were due for two nights at home. Meetings of unofficial strikers continued to denounce their own union. All the rest of the nation earnestly hoped for a quick solution.